If you catch them, I'll come yeah. in up to you in about three seconds. Okay. Okay. Thank you. One, two. <laughs> Hosted by a cock and frock, shaka talk. I hit the streets, been round that block, shaka talk, and jerk off in my dirty socks, shaka talk. My name is Dr. Rhea. Some people call me Faya. I've got something to say. Allow me just one prayer. Okay, I suffer from a mental block, shaka talk. Like, oh my God, and what the fuck, shaka talk. So turn it up and sit right back. Shaka talk. Thanks. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for watching a really quickie of Shaka talk. Um, we are here today with some very special guests. I have my co hostess here today, sitting in for the lovely Edna McMahon. We have DJ Miss Martini. Hello. And there she is. And the ladies from No Mula eating in public. Is that eating in public? Yes. Oh, everybody made Shaka. We forgot. We always forget. So then. <laughs> um, so Eating in Public is the name of who you are and what you do? That's right. Yeah? It's, a, it's the name of our project. Okay. And you're Nandita Sharma? That's right. And Gay Chan, That's right? That's right. Yay! And let's see if I got it right. It's a, a is it an art project or like a activist political? Like, are you just terrorists? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Only if you get scared. If we get scared? All right. <laughs> Only if you're afraid of food. Food, free food, and free, free things. If you're afraid free of food papayas. and free stuff, free things. Freedom, if you're afraid freedom. of free things, and it's terror yeah. all the way. Okay. <laughs> and so, <coughs> eating in public, um, you guys do like some kind of gardener kind of impositions on the land. Something it said so that you, with your gardens, you want to grow and share food, but you also want to problematize the concept of public within public space. That's right. I love that. So what we mean by that mm -hmm. is that we want to have people really question what it is that they actually have access to and what they don't. So, you know, often when we talk about the public, we think we have access to it, mm -hmm. and we do until we need that space to actually live, right? So you can't sleep in public spaces, okay. you can't live in public spaces, you can't grow food in public spaces, so... You can just be in public it's, it's when not, they let you. Right. <laughs> so so it, it comes with this power system that, you know, someone has determined what that space is going to be used for and it's not the people who actually need it. So okay. we're, we're challenging that by saying um, that the public is not as innocent as it appears to be uh, and it's not the exact opposite of private. It actually works hand in hand and the, what we're trying to get, um, what we're trying to uh, enable people to see is that this is actually common space uh, this is our space to determine what what it will be used for. So it's it's going to be determined by the And what users. Nandita means by our means everyone. everyone. Instead of um, the public, which is just the people who have access to private space already. So they can do all the stuff that you can't do in public space at the private space. So if you don't have private space, then you are... Criminalized. Yeah. Because if you don't have your own place to be... Have sex, eat, cook. Then you food. Then the public oh. space is... It's out of bounds. Not really applying yeah. to you at that moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're looking at trying to raise awareness on what public really means. The dichotomy of to the yeah. to the to the general public. <laughs> That's right. Okay. That it relies upon this also the existence of a private property system, um, and both of them exclude large numbers of people who can't either afford private property and then who are criminalized if they try to access public property. Right. So the the issue really is access. Right. Right. And access and who gets to determine what happens. How did you guys um, kind of? I know we didn't go over this correctly, but um, the, um, <laughs> the how are you guys back, like bringing up that issue? It's planting on public space. Yeah. Well, we do. Th we've been doing. We've been being eating public since 2003, and we've okay. done three things so far. One is to a free garden project, which is to plant food without permission on public <laughs> land, and sometimes it turns out to be private and public at the same time. Um, and the second thing we do is that we, we set up free stores, and then the th most recent thing is that we've set up um, an anarchist recycling system. Anarchist and recycling. all of these things we never ask permission, and the reason is because we don't want to recognize a state as, or anybody, 
to, to have the authority to tell us what we can or can't do. So we just do it. And what have they told you? Have you encountered situations where you can't do what you think you... Well, the free garden um, that we first... Our first project was the free garden, uh -huh. and that was planting food without permission on land that was basically sitting there... We should show um, the first growing. Yeah, let's look at the pictures. Sitting there growing <coughs> grass and growing weeds. Uh -huh. So we thought, you know, there's a much better use of this space, which is to grow food. And we planted papayas. Um, Next. Next. We, we planted papaya plants in this uh, neighborhood um, called Enchanted Lake in Kailua. It used to be, uh, it, it, it is the site of uh, Ka'elakulu Pond uh, that was once a thriving fish pond okay. and water cult, you know, kind of um, aquaculture. Um, Rice, taro. So very self-sustaining kind yeah. of... That's right. And, and the people that used that space determined what it was going to be used for, named it, um, and lived there without, you know, depending upon others telling them what to do. So we wanted to remember that in our actions in planting papaya seeds where once people were self-sufficient and self-governing. <laughs> um, and in its place was, you know, put up this... Uh, it's owned by Bishop Estates. It's owned Next by slide. the Kamehameha Schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and they developed it as a suburb and renamed it Enchanted Lake. Did they um, divert the water as well? They blocked a lot of the water. Okay. They dumped a lot of um, it's uh, runoff. It's a, uh, waste kind of into, runoff. into uh, the pond in order to basically create more land to build houses on and okay. sell them for a lot of money. And it wasn't dredged properly so that there's no proper flow so the lake is quite it's it's yeah. because it doesn't have its yeah. its natural course yeah, it's right. water, it's natural ebb and flow yeah. of, of yeah. being able to fill kind of health captive. <laughs> okay. so yeah. the only people who have access to the the lake is really the lake the people that have property on it's the lake it's actually a private lake really oh, yeah wow. this is our water yeah <laughs> so the so the our piece of land water. the little okay. piece of <laughs> land that we grew food on is just mm -hmm. this weedy patch of you know crappy land so mm -hmm. we just planted papayas there right um, in front of this uh, yeah right in front of this yeah fence. so on the on the left picture is the sign put up by Kamehameha schools or mm -hmm. bishop estate and then and then the, we put the sign on the right and we use um this strategy in art called agitprop which is to use it exactly the same aesthetics as the rulers and then we just make fun of them by saying the the thing that they wouldn't say so it's signed the diggers <laughs> and the diggers what is the diggers the diggers we are um we claim no originality for this project whatsoever cool. this is a project that, <laughs> <It's real. laughs> that this is a project that we borrowed from the diggers and the diggers were the original group of people who called themselves the diggers existed in the 17th century in a place Show that we now call of that England. little man digging. Just, let's see some pictures, John. The little man digging. Yeah, little yeah. man digging picture. If you can. I think it's the next one. There, there you go. go. So, you know, someone that looked like that in the 17th century in some place we now <laughs> call England were also, you know, like the people who once had Ka'elipulu Pond uh, in what we now call Kailua, um, were self sufficient, self governing people. Mm. Um, they were tossed off their land. It was taken as someone else's private property and, and developed. And their act of resistance, the group of people who called themselves the diggers, was to plant food on the land that they, of theirs that had just been stolen. And planting okay. food had two purposes, which are basically the same purposes as us. One is, you know, concretely, we need food. We mm -hmm. need to eat, and for the 17th century diggers, they were starving because they had been just tossed off their land, uh, and you know they had they no other way to go. There's no safe way. Yeah, but they no needed safe way. to eat. Uh, but secondly, they were they were laying claim to the land as still theirs, and they were refusing to acknowledge the the new owners. You know, whether that was the private property owners or whether that was the new state that had just been created at that time. So we're basically doing the same thing. We're saying that we should not have to rely on a market system that gives us wages in order to eat, because that's another form of enslavement. Or we shouldn't have to rely on the state that tells us where we can grow food or not, in, in order to keep us starving and you know continuing um, to work. So the diggers work. planted yeah. um, turnips, beans, parsnips. Yeah, we kind of root vegetables, because that's yeah. what grew well there. And, but we planted papayas, because that's 
one of the easiest. You planted it on Kamehameha property, and then yeah. they tried to. Somebody first came and they kind of said, like, "Can you guys get rid of it?" They told us to move it. Mm -hmm. They told us that they um, they had plans for it or something, mm -hmm. but we didn't move it. We just wrote back a sign saying that we don't know where else to put it. That other people <laughs> can easily find the papaya. So I don't yeah. know what to do. So we'll see what you're gonna do. And then a few months later. Um, they moved the fence that separated the private and the public land right over our papaya plants, and then so it kind of cut them all down. And this moment was really great because um, since it's been there for a while and people like the signs and the crazy things that we did, we had developed um, like some fans. Cool. <laughs> who <were> very <laughs> some grassroots support. Yeah, they're like, why would anybody do that? It's like it's, wow. well, it's just papaya. And that's what's, I mean, this is another thing that we borrowed from the diggers because their act was, you know, this act of planting food yeah. is seen as unthreatening. Yeah. Which is really <laughs> it's interesting, right? It's, right? it's, it's, it's sustenance. It's, it's yeah, life. It's, it's not seen as this, you know, massive militant action. Right. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it is really threatening. So that's what's interesting, right? That neither the English state for the original diggers or or the Kamehameha school system could deal with people just planting food. Like it became this really so dangerous harmless. thing. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. actually nourishing. And, um, and people, I think, recognize that tension, and that's why people got angry. It's like, this is just planting papaya. It's like, you know, what for God's sake, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the big deal? So that, so that was a turning point for the project, and, um, and people, so, so more people got excited about it. And we, the, in fact, we replanted the papayas and it got bigger. We planted sweet potatoes, peppers, lemongrass, uh -huh. lily corn, all kinds of things there. So, so um, in uh, along the same fence. Yeah, the same fence. It just kind of expanded because okay. the, the the woman who lived right next to it let us use the, the hose water. and start watering. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. You know, because before hose. we used to haul buckets, which was really. Um, Mm. Very demanding. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So that was lazy. a great turning <laughs> It's like, point. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> but then we started the next thing. Um, well, the diggers, interestingly enough, other people have taken up the diggers' work. And the most famous one is the San Francisco diggers. So we can look at cool. um, <coughs> the next slide. In the 1960s. Oh, so really? this is the free food in the park. That's right. This is the... Yeah, the, the free started. bread, the free bread, and the free store. That's right. Was was there was, right? Was okay. their project? So they started the free. They were the first people, I think, to free start clinic, the free store. Free clinic, medical right. clinic, free clinic. Right. Really? So they had a space, okay. and, and then people would just. Like, and when bring I was stuff. when I was a little girl growing up in Vancouver, Canada, uh, you know, I grew up in a you know working class neighborhood, you know, relatively poor family. We didn't have a lot of money to send us off shopping, mm -hmm. so my brother and I. Um, one day came along a free store that had opened like around the corner from where we lived. You know, this is like in the early oh, 1970s. Wow. Like I'm 10 years old and I'm looking, oh, my God, I could actually walk into this store, have anything I want and wow. walk out of it and I don't need in money. Canada. And that was just the most <laughs> liberating set freedom wow. that I had as a 10 year old. I couldn't believe it was that inside this was, of a building. Yeah, it was a store. It was, it was. So they went every day. So we went every day. <laughs> and I remember getting a pair of go go boots, these white, beautiful right. go go right. boots. Yeah. And I just thought, this is the kind of world I want to live in. I want to be able to look and look good and <laughs> for free. <Yeah. laughs> right. We're beauties on a budget here. <laughs> I, like, I got some of these, so you guys started free stores here, right? Right. That's right. Yeah. Many of them. So huh? Gay, I told Gay this story, and mm -hmm. she. Uh, built a free store in our, in our front yard and that was that, <laughs> that was so free great free store. Show, I the, love show it. the picture of the free store in our yard. Oh, oh so the so it started and then the newspaper came and did an article on us. Cool. But where did you get your items from? These free thing, these things I got at the free store at the UH um, the art building mm. kind of by the gallery. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just I happened upon it too. I was like, look at all this stuff. See look, <laughs> this from my hair. and this one too. I actually wore this in Shock Attack number 2. I wear it as a brooch. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. And uh -huh. yeah, I just came upon it. I was like, and there was all these magazines, and yeah. I'm a total zine geek. And like, I just took all this stuff, and I was like, I gotta put something back. So I dug all kinds of crap out of my room, <laughs> and I put it there. And I don't know if anybody wanted it. Okay, right on. Well, we've got tons of really great things at the free store, but mm -hmm. also a lot of people say, well, you know, now I know where to where to put my things because mm. they hate most people hate throwing things away yeah so here's a space that's always there so this is the picture of the one um so. that we started in kailua um at a chance that's where we lived 
Oh, oh the, this this is a great part yeah. of the first store. <laughs> What's that? Well, the San Francisco diggers had this concept called free money too. They would put up flyers that says um, that suggested everyone gave them their money and f so that they could redistribute to everybody. Oh, that's very them. kind. Right? <laughs> and so we just made the free money box, and people put in money. Wow. And oh my gosh. And what did you do with it? We just no, left nothing. it there. People would take it. People would leave it. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. That's Isn't awesome. Isn't this a great Give world? A, yeah. wow. 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 You know, sometimes, you know, somebody needs a quarter. Somebody yeah. Needs a dollar. That's right. So like with the free money box, like in the morning when I go to work, it would be let's say fifty-seven cents in mm -hmm. there, and then when I come home, they'd be like maybe thirty-two cents in there. Like wow. <laughs> why? Why? I don't know why. Nobody just needed why. enough for bus fare. That's right. yeah. Maybe. You know? That's cute. Yeah. So it really like it demonstrated to us, you know, as a social project that, you know, we al we always hear that unless you have to, you know, work, you're not going to appreciate the value of something, mm -hmm. and that is, mm -hmm. you know, the free store has just put a lie to that because people do appreciate things that they get for free. Yeah, it's, it seems they, like it's and well they maintained. Do, and, and they do give yeah. back. Nobody works there, right? Yeah. Nobody works there. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> take care of people. Yeah, other people take care of it too. I was like surprised when I walked. I was like, I gotta find some more free stores. <laughs> well, the thing <laughs> is that when we first set it up, there were people who were concerned that there would be like these homeless people, or scary mm. people who would take everything and then yeah. come and steal things from your house too. Mm -hmm. And it's proven to them that their fears are unfounded. Yeah. You know, so the joke that you made, are we terrorists? Mm -hmm. And I think that what it's shown is that the terror lives inside of us because we are scared of the unknown. And once you show it, it's like, oh, it's not scary at all. Oh, yeah. I, I got this free thing. <laughs> so, totally. And, that, and, you know, something that Gay just said, I think, really gets to the heart of our project, which is, is having people reimagine their idea of community. You know, mm -hmm. so here we're living in Kailua. It's this kind of uptight middle class. You know, Enchanted Lake Park is a pretty uptight middle class, well, you know, quite militarized little neighborhood, right? And then you guys and moved then, in. <laughs> and then, but what also people realize, what the free store showed them, mm -hmm. is all the people that they actually are in, in a community with uh, that they either refuse to see before or mm. refuse to acknowledge as possibly part of their community or were afraid of. And so it actually expanded people's sense of who's actually in this space. It, and like it created does actually, a community, sort yeah. of, because well, it actually does include interact. people yeah. that don't have very much money, and it, it includes people who are homeless. And, and all of a sudden, it created a space of interaction amongst people that was that hopefully lessened their fear, right? And, yeah. and allowed people to look, um, em you know, empathetically or compassionately okay. to other people who are actually there. How many free stores are there now? Do you know? One, two, there's secret three. free stores with all the good shit. <laughs> <laughs> the, I think the, the thriving one is at UH, the one you got your things oh, from. Oh, really? Because there's, there's, there's a couple, couple at UH. There's a picture yeah. still, John? There's a uh, couple of back one, the one with the many, many pictures. Yeah. That one. Um, so that's just like a couple of days of the things coming and going all the time. Wow. And, and then like the bottom right picture mm -hmm. shows, um, I think that... Was it KTUH had like a big sale of all their old CDs, really? and these are all the leftovers. So they brought everything to us. We had, we must have had like ten thousand CDs wow. there. Free. <laughs> oh my god. And then oh. people would take thousands of it, and then they would sort it out and then bring them back. You know, so it's just a constant, and so no one hoarded. Oh. Nice influx. Yeah. And you know the great thing about a free store is you can just do it anywhere. That's right. You mm -hmm. don't. No. You don't even need to. Do we need have permission? A, have a kiosk. Do we need a license? You can just do it Just do it a sign, say free. Yeah, and, and, and that's what I, I really love about Portland is, yeah. is instead of just putting everything out in the trash yeah. or taking it down to Salvation yeah. Army or whatnot, yeah. people will literally put it on their curb yeah. with a sign that says free on it. Yeah. I got a great bike from my husband. Right. Yeah. Uh, took it down to the bike shop, got new tires, got it fixed yeah. up. But speaking of not throwing things bucks, away... You guys also started the high five bins That's yep. right. for recycling. Yeah, because uh, as we know, Hawaii has a pathetic recycling system. <laughs> Say it. Right? It, uh -huh. it, it, is there the a recycling state, system? Yeah, the state refuses to take any responsibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the people who create this shit that we have to recycle don't mm -hmm. take any responsibility. The state takes Next. Next takes picture. no responsibility. So all we, we're Next left picture. with a growing pile of garbage. And we live right. on an island, right? Yeah. Yeah. And where is it supposed to go? <laughs> right? I mean, let's think about it. I mean, yeah. the, basic, the basic concept is there's no so land. <laughs> we just got fed up and thought, you know, we need a recycling system here. And you created your yeah. own. 
<laughs> so we figure, okay, if they're not going to do it, we'll do it ourselves. Thank but, you. you know, but a so key thing here. was is that, you know, we didn't want to, you know, because a major part of the Eating in Public project mm -hmm. as a whole is to really have people reimagine their sense of community, right, was, and to, and to take care of each other. So the high five system was, you know, as the sign says, take, leave, whatever. It's like, you know, do what you want. Like, <laughs> don't wait for someone to tell you what to do. If you need the thing, take it. If you don't need it, leave it. And let's just, like, let's just live our lives and, you and give these, take care of each other. You give these to people to just leave all over and they just leave their or recyclables ideally, in? ideally, let people make them them, uh, themselves, you know, like, we, we don't own these ideas. We don't, don't want to do it all because, yeah. I mean, really, I'm very <laughs> it's <work>. busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to sit up, bake so sale, all making is, these. All it takes <laughs> is a so, little bit of wire mesh. How long is this? Yeah, this is, this uh, is about, one, three, two and a half feet. Two and a half feet? And you make a circle with it? Yeah, okay. So, okay. so you just, you, if you buy the mesh by okay. three feet rolls, you or can get it. two. Okay. Like, you know, like this. Or, or find old, it somehow. Old construction project. Yeah. Or yeah. Right. Okay. Old, old chain link fence coming down. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And just then the, the only thing is that the holes have to be smaller than the cans, right? That's easy enough. And okay. then you cut it with these prongs on the side, uh -huh. and you just stick it together you and you wind it. Right, so I'm going to be doing this. And now okay. I'm, I'm, the purpose of me showing you how to do this is that so I would, don't have to make it for you. Yeah, watch <laughs> and learn so she don't have to do it all because she'll get arrows, I'm sure. <laughs> she'll let you know. <laughs> and, then, so, and then if you need a bottom, there's like... So you leave a bunch of the pokies on the bottom. Yeah. Does that make it so it can stick in the ground? Um, yeah, if yeah. you put it in grass or you know, somewhere yeah. soft, that's good. So we have but one in front of a house. So we just, everything... Because we don't drink that much sodas and stuff, mm -hmm. so um, so we just leave it outside and someone else picks it up immediately. And they leave all the recyclables inside. And other yeah. of our neighbors leave their stuff too. Do they, have, do they ever leave gross things in there or do you get dirty Very tampons? Sometimes. Very, no, no, no. no, nothing like sometimes that. They, they At worst like it'll be like um, a half-filled half bottle. Half bottle of beer. Oh really? So people are respectful just about the yeah. concept yeah, and yeah, like yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. parameter yeah, of yeah. like no, and I'll really pick up is more frequent than the state, that's for sure. Yeah, so what do you hope? What do you hope happens with this project? Where do you where do, where do you hope that it goes? Well, ideally, you know, first people do it for the, you know do it themselves, but also start thinking of other things that you know haven't been thought of yet. Like kind what else? What else do we need? Spark ideas and like, like what do we need? What kind of other how can we raise? Yeah, yeah like what what is it that we need? What is it that we want? Mm -hmm. You know, is it possible to put into action the things that we want, mm -hmm. and to not wait for someone? to give you permission to do mm -hmm. what you want to do. Mm -hmm. you know? cool. Do you feel like um, this action, this is a revolutionary act to me. You know, this is, this is taking the concept of recycling, which number one, hasn't, hasn't been established here by the state, like you said, where it's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. And then you have someone come along with a very simple, easy to do DIY project and people have embraced it. It's obvious that it's yeah. working. You've gotten attention, you know, from the media, you've gotten attention from the community members. Yeah, and, and people use them. And people use them. And you know, you could you don't have to wait long for someone to come and get them. Right. Someone that needs mm -hmm. it does what they need to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. And so do you think that you've maybe put some sort of shame? I shame is a big concept in Hawaii. Like yeah. it's 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 our it's how we it's how we toe the line here. You know, it really is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and so do you think that at some point this Can't project <laughs> might shame the state <laughs> into doing the right thing? Because really it's about doing the right thing, right? Yeah, I mean, if the state did it, fine. We've got other things to do. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to come up with these ideas for like, everybody. You know, like, we will, we will move on to, because, you know... Mm -hmm. right. be all, we, we got need, more ideas. Right. Well, going, the yeah. concept is awareness, and the concept yeah. Yeah. is help. You know, yes. helping people help themselves. Yeah. Right. Motivating and mobilizing. And, and also, our dreams are bigger than just recycling, because we shouldn't be producing all of this shit we have to clean up later anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. why are we? It's nonsense. Why do we make all this junk? Yeah, so we should stop making. <laughs> you even junk. recycled uh, some other signs. Yeah, these to are make campaign your signs. These are all political oh, campaign nice. signs. Oh, nice! There's <laughs> plenty of those here. Yeah. Yes. So the state should be able to find enough of those campaign signs themselves. Every so <laughs> often. <laughs> and print them up. Why Somebody's not? running, right? <laughs> Or so, away. And they don't even need to use those, those signs for the thing, right? They could just make a little bin and create their own signs? Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. Just get a piece of 
you know, junk wood around the house and then just write take, leave, or whatever. That's mm -hmm. all. High five. High five. Yeah. High five. Let's make high five real fast. Yeah. Can I high five you guys? High five. You guys, you guys roll. <laughs> oh, and it's also Shaka Talk too. Shaka! <laughs> so, there you guys go. If you guys are going to go eating in public, we showed you a few things to do. You can pick your own garden and eat and make rice hall that way. Free stores are all over the island. You can start your own. Or even make your own high five bin for recycling. In front of your house, your apartment is working really great for apartment buildings. Your oh, school. Really? There's okay. lots of Oh, UH. yeah, Castle High School has them, and UH has them. Right on. So we better see more, yeah? Um, should they visit your website to get those things, or go find it themselves? <laughs> Preferably, you make it yourself. Yeah, but we're do it. We're um, hoping to get some grants, um, oh, grant right. money to hold bin-making parties. Nice. Oh, okay. Nice. So we'll provide all the tools and the um, it's like supplies. Like an orgy, but for like yeah. recycling. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so hopefully we'll know about about month whether we got the money or not, and then check Great. our website and we'll um, keep yeah. checking. You guys, you guys have a blog spot and all that too, yeah. It's like we have and a blog. A Facebook so it's no moolah. No moolah dot com. Com. Dot com. N o m o o l a. Or just um, Google eating in public. Eating in public. Right on, you guys. Thank you, Thank Mandita you, and Gay. And Good Leah. to meet you. Yeah, yeah. It's great to meet you. To Thank meet you, you so much for doing and everything you're doing. Yeah, it's And taking the time rocking. to come down here and explain yeah, us and all. Yeah, being a light for her meeting. So, um, <laughs> thank you, John. And then thank you, everybody else, for watching Shaka Talk and starting your own free stores and recycling and gardens and all of it. Toodaloo. Find right the on. power. Right on. <laughs> 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 okay, cut it. <laughs>